Okay, starting today, we're going to have a whole new series of videos on reviews of the original series of Star Trek. We start with the man trap after this. Hello out there, I'm the oldest nerd, and our intention here is to go back and look at the original series of Star Trek as if it's the first time we've seen them. I have uh, put some thought to this as I have reviewed um, various of the new Star Treks and have wondered uh, what kind of reaction I would have if I were watching the original series now for the first time. Now, I'm familiar with all of these stories, as most of you are, I'm certain, but uh, have not watched them in some time. So uh, I want to look at it with fresh eyes, and we're looking at the remastered ones, uh, the ones where they went back to the negatives and have uh, much clearer pictures than we ever remember seeing, and uh, enhanced special effects uh, that they were not able to do at the time. Uh, on the man trap, uh, we, uh, you know the story. Uh, it is um, uh, a standard planetary survey where uh, uh, Kirk and McCoy uh, come down to do medical examinations on Earth colonists who, uh, in this case, a pair of archaeologists uh, who have been on the planet for about five years. Turns out, of course, uh, that one of them is not who we think she is. And we have a little bit of backstory to begin with on Dr. McCoy that uh, he's had a romantic entanglement at one time or other with someone named Nancy. And um, she's now married to uh, the archaeologist that's there, uh, Robert Crater. And that's uh, kind of where we start on this. However, uh, I can see what NBC was thinking about. Uh, the way it worked in television at the time was that you could not be um, assured of the shows being done in their filming order, and the filming order often didn't make any difference as to the progression of the story. Everything, of course, was self-contained. So uh, what they did was uh, Desi Lu, at the time that produced Star Trek, uh, sent three or four programs to NBC to get started, and they picked the one that they thought would be the best one to start out with. And I don't disagree with their choice. Uh, uh, the Man Trap, which was actually probably the third one filmed, uh, did have all of the elements that you need to get started with Star Trek. You have a, uh, a, a captain who um, is, is very much in command of his ship, a, uh, a chief surgeon who is uh, a little crotchety, but uh, uh, a good doctor. You have uh, the first officer who shows his lack of emotion, but at the same time, uh, uh, immense sense of duty. Uh, you see a lot of people on the ship. Uh, this is something that we don't think about uh, uh, in in looking back on this um, on this series that uh, they had so many extras and there were always uh, uh, people in the corridors. Uh, they were doing various things, holding various props. Uh, there's all kinds of sound effects going on of of activity on the ship. Uh, they actually showed eating. You don't see eating much outside of the uh, dining areas in most places, but uh, in this case, we have Yeoman Rand in the hall sampling celery that she's going to bring to Sulu. Uh, we have uh, the captain on the bridge uh, having a snack uh, while uh, they're trying to decide whether to go back down to the planet or not. Um, we have uh, Sulu who's having uh, lunch in his cabin, and uh, we see the inside of Sulu's cabin, maybe the only time in the series in which uh, we see all of his, uh, uh, his plants and uh, some of them uh, uh, very um, uh, animated. And uh, the clarity of all of this, you can see that there were no gold uniforms. They were light green. Uh, the, unfortunately, in the reruns, the uh, film would fade, and the uniforms themselves being made out of velour uh, did not show green very well. Uh, interestingly, though, um, NBC in the day was very um, specific about their color controls uh, to their local stations and, of course, at the network level. And uh, we're starting to see it the way that it must have been originally broadcast. 
Now, I wouldn't have known what color it was at home. Uh, the television set that we had, uh, the old uh, uh, style uh, color TVs, uh, especially when they first came out, we uh, had our first color TV in about 1967. I think that was uh, uh, a year after the show came out. And uh, you could turn the color anything that you wanted. Uh, people were either kind of green or kind of pink, and uh, you never really knew what color it was supposed to be. These days, we have it easy that uh, that's all set automatically. But uh, the, the fact that the color was very vibrant uh, throughout the film, and that's not the um, anything to do with enhanced special effects, just, uh, just new um, uh, prints from the negatives that uh, make it as clear as it should have been when it was done on the network. That's uh, impressive. We have Ahura who seems to have a thing for Spock. She's trying to seduce him and he of course uh, throws it right back at her and, and uh, she ends with uh, a, an insult which is clever. Uh, he says Vulcan has no moon. She says I'm not surprised. There's a mention, I think, the only time in the series of The Great Bird of the Galaxy, which is what Gene Roddenberry was called, and uh, it was uh, in, in, in show kind of a, a humorous aside between Sulu and Rand, who also seemed to have kind of a little thing going on. Uh, or at least a, a, a very good um, um, spirit of camaraderie that the crew had. Now, uh, we had our extras... Um, like I say, they were in um, blue and green uniforms. There, uh, there were no, uh, there were no red uniforms uh, that were uh, that were killed, at least on the planet. I think that those that were killed on board the ship probably weren't in red either. So that whole joke uh, uh, doesn't really hold up when you look at the series. Not, not completely. They probably uh, had an equal amount of uh, different divisions uh, losing their lives. If they were uh, not a regular on the, on the show, uh, their, their lives were uh, up in the air, shall we say. It's only the uh, one out of two times that I recall in the series where they even mention Sulu's interest in botany. And uh, it shows that there is a life on the ship uh, other than just uh, being on the bridge. Uh, it shows that there are a lot of people on this ship that have jobs to do. Uh, it shows the uh, beginnings of the uh, triumvirate of Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. And uh, it, uh, it has some very good acting. The, uh, the guest stars are very convincing. Um, Nancy Crater, or the, the uh, creature, uh, that morphs into different characters are all played the same way. Each of the actors that that uh, have the uh, that are assumed by uh, by the creature uh, have the same um, body language, and I think that uh, that says something very good to uh, the director of this episode and uh, of the, um, the care that was taken in putting it together. It obviously uh, had a lot of work done on it, and, uh, and they did um, a very good performance throughout. Um, you can see um, the doubt on Spock's face. You can see the concern on Kirk's face. You can see his interest in maintaining his authority while down on the planet. Um, you know, the guest star who plays the... Um, scientist who's by himself most of the time and doesn't have a lot of social skills works and and the way the crew interact with each other also works very well now as for the enhanced special effects it only helps we have a wider view of the planet's surface uh, we have the enterprise in orbit more realistically uh, frankly uh, the uh, enterprise model which was about uh, seven feet long which is now in the smithsonian by the way actually got uh, my picture taken next to it i got to find that somewhere and, and show it to you was in a studio that was so small that they couldn't really move it and they couldn't get the camera far enough back to have uh, any decent shots of it. So always that, that slight tilt shot or that uh, front shot was the only thing they ever did of it. And uh, now we see uh, more views of the top and bottom and a little more movement apparent uh, of the Enterprise when it's in orbit and a little more realistic that it doesn't look bigger than the planet does. So uh, that's uh, the, the enhanced special effects don't distract us from it, but um, make it feel like that it's more contemporary. 
And, and I think that's what my whole um, impression of this first episode is, is that it could have been written yesterday. And it could have been with actors that we didn't know. Uh, we would think that it was something that was written very recently. I, I think that uh, it was incredibly well done, and it holds up incredibly well. All of this available on Paramount Plus, and there are other places. Uh, many people already have the series on DVDs or Blu-rays or things like this, and uh, I think it's worth seeing again. It's worth watching again, uh, uh, because I think that uh, it's more than just nostalgia that makes us think that this show was as good as it was. I think it's as good as it was. So I'd like to know what you think about it. Please put it in the comments. Uh, we are going to be uh, taking these uh, one at a time in broadcast order, and uh, uh, we will eventually incorporate um, the uh, enhanced version of the cage as well, but uh, we'll probably do that near the end of the first season, just so we can go back and look at that. We will also be uh, reviewing the end of Picard, uh, all of Strange New Worlds, and other things as uh, they come about. So uh, we're hoping that uh, as the summer goes through, we'll be able to uh, pr present uh, more videos to you as uh, my, uh, my workload is a little bit less in my day job. So uh, that, will, uh, that will help us. Uh, like to hear from you and please subscribe if you've not subscribed yet. Uh, please do so. It doesn't cost a thing and it certainly will help the channel. Thank you for watching and until next time, don't go far.